Hello, River of Life Community Fellowship. It is time again for another midweek check-in. Now, it's election time. This is this is election week now. But I, I'm recording this video before the election happens, but it's not going to be posted until the day after election day. And so by the time you see this video, maybe there will be results. Maybe there won't be results. Probably there won't be results. But Either way, you know, the, the election is happening, happened, and um, now it's just got, got to get through all the cases and count all the votes. And uh, I, I feel like as Christians, there's some very important things that we need to remember in the aftermath of this election. There's some very important things that we need to, uh, some very important ideas that the Bible lays out that in the aftermath of this election, we need to live out as followers of God. Now, in uh, church on Sunday mornings, we've been going through um, a talking point series, or a series on t- called Talking Points, which is um, just ha- where faith and politics mix together, where that intersection of faith and politics happens, and how we as followers of Christ are supposed to navigate that intersection. And so I encourage you, if you haven't um, seen that series, or if you've missed a couple of the videos or one of the videos, I'll uh, put a link in the comments or in the description rather, so that you can go and view that video, that series if you like, or listen to the audio. I encourage you to do that because I really feel like there's some very important things that God God has laid out about how we as followers of Christ are supposed to navigate such a divisive political system. And so like, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to get in that. But for right now, I want to talk about three things that we as followers of Christ need to do in the aftermath of this very, very contentious election. So the first is, and that this is a big one, we need to remember that whoever wins the election, whoever becomes president, whoever's in the White House come the end of January, is the one chosen by God. And that like that's sometimes hard for us to wrap our our minds around as Christians. You know, we get this idea it's like okay, th- this person follows God. Like, you know, their faith or whatever, we know we we think this person follows God, so this person follows God. So this must be God's candidate. This other person does not follow God. They are not a God follower, so they cannot be God's candidate. But the truth is and that this is this is what Romans 13. This is what Paul wrote in Romans 13 verses 1 and 2. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. So, all authority comes from God. Paul was very clear about that. and He, he was telling Christians in Rome, the Roman Christians, look, be subject to the governing authorities. These are the same authorities that killed Paul. These are the same ones that executed Peter. These are the Romans who tried to stop the growth of the church. These were, these were the Romans who were actively persecuting followers of Christ. And Paul writes them and says, writes to the Christians and says, let every person be subject to the authority because all authority comes from God. And so we need to remember that whoever wins the election, whoever's president come the end of January is the president that God chose. And sometimes God chooses presidents that don't seem to line up with his value. He chooses leaders who don't seem to line up with this value because he has a plan that goes beyond what we can think or understand. He like, he, he works things in ways that we will never, ever understand. And so he chooses people based on his plan, not on the values that we think a candidate should have. And so whoever God chooses will win the election and they are God's chosen candidate. And so we need to remember that as Christians, whoever is in the White House is there because God put them there. And as followers of Christ, we have some things that we need to do with that. We need to, you know, submit ourselves to their leadership. We need to honor them. We need to pray for them. And that's a big one. And so we need to make sure to be getting on our knees before God and praying for the people that lead us. And so that that's the first thing I want us to know is that all authority comes from God. <clears throat> the second thing that is very, very important for us as followers of Christ is 
that we need to understand the two most important rules. And we need to live out those two most important rules. No matter who wins, no matter what the circumstances of the election are, no matter what the aftermath of the election brings, we need to live out the two most important rules that Jesus laid out for us. And that is to love God and love others. Like, and there, there's, there's no, no caveats with that. You know, the, the, the verse actually says, love the Lord with, lo, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love him with everything that you are and love your neighbor as yourself. And when Jesus said that, one of the, one of the Pharisees there said, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus said, Jesus kind of told this story that basically the neighbor's the one who serves you when you're in need and who you serve when you're in need, when they are in need. Like, that's it. Like, it's just people who need help and people who help. Like, your neighbor is basically everyone around you. It's not the people that you exclude for whatever reason. It's not the people that you're separated from for whatever reason. It's not the people that your politics has divided you from for whatever reason. We need to love God and love others as we love ourselves. And that is the most important thing. When all, when, No matter what happens after this election, we love God and we love others. And like that is such a powerful tool that God gave us to be able to show the world who God is just simply by loving them. Even, even when we're divided, even when we disagree with them, even when we think they're absolutely crazy nuts, we love them because God loved us. And that, that's the law of Christ. And that's what we do. Now, the third thing that we need to remember in the aftermath of this election, and I, I think this is the, 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 probably the most important one. This is the one that we need to, as followers of Christ, that we always need to hang our hat on. And this is that our political views are never, ever more important than our need to share the gospel. Like that, that was the last commandment that Jesus gave us was to go and make disciples, to share with them the good news with every nation, with every tribe, with every tongue, everybody. We share the gospel. Now, if you think about it, when Jesus was sharing that, he lived in a divided world. He was um, a Jew living in a Roman empire that for the longest time was controlled by Greeks. Like, like that, the, the pa area of Palestine where he lived was controlled by Greeks before the Romans came along. And so like there were, there were Romans, there were Greeks, there were Jews, there were Arabs, there were all kinds of people there. And like it was divided and segregated. Society was not inclusive. Society was not together. And Jesus lived in that. And he said, look, you guys, you disciples go and tell the world about me, every nation, every tribe, every tongue. He basically said, go across those dividing lines and share my love with everyone around you. And that is what we need to do in today's political environment where, you know, so much of our society is becoming divided by identity, by, by the things that we like, by the views that we have, by our opinions. And like, that's such a sad thing. But God tells us that we need to be unified as followers of Christ in the midst of that division and share the love of God with everybody, even those we disagree with. And I, I think like that is, that is the most important thing in the, in, in terms of our political views. One of the things that, that God has really worked on my heart and that I've been very intentional about, especially in the last, um, four or six years or so is if my, if sharing my political views puts a wall between me and somebody else, that wall will prevent me from sharing the gospel with them. Therefore, I need to not share my political views. It is more important for me to share the gospel than it is to share my political views because our political views are so divisive. And if we're sharing them, we're putting a wall. Like if, if we're, if we're so adamant about our political views that it puts a wall between us and somebody else, we're putting a wall between us and the opportunity to share the gospel with them. And that goes against what God told us to do. I mean, even when Jesus was telling us to love others like we love ourselves, um, he was telling us that we, when we do that, we show the world God's love. And that is the most important thing that we can do. We show the world God's love through what we talk about, through our actions, through how we treat them, even when we disagree with them. Now, as I, I finish up here, I, I just want to share a quick Facebook post from a friend of mine. And like when he posted this, he posted this about a week ago. It just kind of like it struck me. And then I got, I was able to kind of think back 
on things that I've seen from him over the last few years, and I could see this change in him, and it was amazing. So th this is what my friend Nick wrote. He wrote, when I was big into politics, I wasn't a very nice person. I said a lot of mean things towards people whose views I refused to see. When I decided to fast from politics and draw deeper into God, I started to see the error of my way. It didn't take long to drop politics altogether and just pursue after what God wanted. God woke me up to something better, to learning how to love others as well as myself, including those I disagree with, loving like Jesus did. If we do this, then if we don't do this, then who will? In the grand scheme of things, what will your disagreements do for you? Nothing. So you might as well be nice and give it a try. And that's, I think that is like the heart of what Jesus told us to do in living in this world around us is that we need to show the people around us God's love his compassion, his mercy, even the people who are different from us, even the people who disagree with us. And in doing that, they will see who God is. Like we are the mirrors for God in this world. And so we need to make sure that our surface is shiny so that people can see God, God's reflection in us. So that's my encouragement for you today. Remember, no matter what happens, God is still in control and God wants you to love others as he has loved you. Thanks and God bless.